G'day, I'm Paul. Volkswagen has taken the wraps off the new Amarok. We've had a proper look at it, a bit of a deep dive, but today is all about actually driving it. And I'm really excited for this because while this shares a platform with the next generation Ranger, Volkswagen claims to have done a lot of the work under the skin on its own. So we'll see whether that is the case today. Now, this competes with things like the Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux, Isuzu D-Max. There are a stack of competitors in this segment. So it is gonna have a hard time blending in given how many people are actually buying these days. We don't know pricing just yet, but we do know that it is gonna launch in Australia next year. Today, I'm gonna to take you through a detailed look at this. We're gonna do an on-road review and a little bit of off-road driving as well. So if you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a blue ute. So let's talk exterior design. You can get your new Bucky in eight different colors. This one here is unique to Volkswagen, so you won't be able to get this on the Ford Ranger. Now, just very quickly as well, the Ford Ranger, how did they make this look so different? Well, Volkswagen actually installed 20 engineers and designers out of Ford's headquarters in Geelong, where they were doing all the engineering work on this. And Volkswagen was involved right from the very beginning of that whole process. So that meant they could have their own design and integrate their own components. And when we go inside the cab, I'll give you a better idea of all the sort of Volkswagen specific stuff that's in there. So that is why, despite this sharing a platform with the Ranger, it looks totally different. Um, so down the front here, depending on which grade you go for, you get different designs. And this one here is the top spec. It's called the Adventura. Aventra, sorry, there's no D in there. And to then depending on which grade you actually go for in between, it will then change all of these colors. Even the base model has like a black setup down the front here. It looks pretty tough actually. Uh, so big grill here for cooling for that engine, big Volkswagen logo as well with the camera there with a little washer installed. Amarok lettering deep etched into there with a radar down the bottom. The headlights, Matrix LED headlights, and they've actually got that across most of the range, which I think is pretty impressive. Fog lights down the bottom there as well. And then we'll whip around to the side. Now down here, get ready for this, 21 inch alloy wheels, absolutely enormous. So I don't know how this is gonna go in terms of the way that it drives both on-road and off-road. A 21 inch wheel on a dual cab ute is, is an adventurous option, but they do have a custom suspension tune for this wheel layout. And keep in mind as well that they do have a 21 inch alloy wheel on the Everett's. So the platform is engineered and designed to take this type of thing. You get front and rear disc brakes, you get wheel arch cladding up the top here as well. I like these flared wheel arch as well. They stick out nicely and give this quite a bit of character too. Now up the top here, you have chrome on that wing mirror, a camera built into here for the 360 camera, zone lighting as well, and an indicator built into there. Not a huge fan of these side steps when I was getting up on them before, they're quite sort of flimsy. So I don't know if you're gonna be doing any off-roading and you collect a rock on one of those, it could be the end of your side step pretty quickly. Chrome uh, door handles there, you've got roof rails, privacy glass. I quite like this, so sail plane with a little compass built into there for good measure. Under the back here, you have leaf spring suspensions. They haven't gone down the path of a coil sprung setup. And look, I think the Ranger drives fine without coil springs, and hopefully this feels the same as the Ranger does. Four motion on the side here, because that is Volkswagen's version of all-wheel drive. This particular spec with the V6 comes with a constant all-wheel drive system as well. Come around to the rear. So have a look at this, some more changes up the back here. So LED taillights, I quite like this setup and you can see this plastic element has been built into here to kind of give it a, a very different look to the Ford Ranger. And I think this is quite a classy and sophisticated look. Another four motion badge down there, you can see Amarok etched into this uh, tailgate as well. Big Volkswagen logo there. Three and a half ton brake towing capacity, which is good news, a little more of that chrome highlight. Did notice there is no sidestep here like you do find on Ranger variants outside of the Raptor which make getting things out of the tray a little easier. So they've obviously not gone with that for the Amarok for some reason. Now, inside the tray, you've got a pretty familiar setup to the Ranger. You have this bed liner. It's not the spray-in type, but you do have an electric roller cover. So that whips out of the way. And it gives you the same interior dimensions here as you're going to find in the Ranger as well, which means fitting a Euro size pallet too, which is good news. And finally built into the tailgate, you've got a torsion bar in there, which makes it easier to open and close that tailgate. So let's jump inside the cabin. I'll run you through the infotainment system and some of the Volkswagen touches. So we are inside the Amarok. Let's start off with the key. So looks familiar. It's the uh, same key as the Ford Ranger. So unlock, lock, and then two button pushes here to open the roller cover on the tray and then a Volkswagen logo on the back there. It's a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. Once you're inside, you have a button here on uh, just next to the steering wheel to turn it all over. Now, 
Have a look at this. It does look a little bit familiar to Ranger, but in a similar theme to the front and the, and the exterior design, Volkswagen has added all of their touches, including a custom infotainment system. I'll run you through in just a second. Uh, but I do like touches like this. You've basically got this uh, sort of leather material along the dashboard there to replace the soft touch stuff that Ford uses. And I think this gives it a really premium appearance. And that follows through to the doors there as well. So you kind of get the vibe that this is bit more of a, a luxury car in comparison. Even stuff like this, you've got that sort of brushed plastic look around there instead of piano black. So I think that is nice. But it is a little scratchy around the place though. So you can hear all that stuff there. It's still a little bit scratchy and it would have been nice to see that sort of premium material flow through down the bottom. The steering wheel's different too. And thankfully it's not the annoying steering wheel that's fitted to other Volkswagen products with the touch sensitive pads. They're all actually physical buttons, which is great. The only sort of thing that I've just noticed here though, that this being the top spec model has all these blanks on it. So I'm curious to know what it's missing or whether they're extra features that are gonna be coming in the future. But um, yeah, now just in terms of build quality and stuff like that, normally this is where I do my flex test and all that sort of stuff, but these are pre-production cars. So we'll wait until we get these back in Australia and I'll have a proper sort of run through it all. Now, what does our door sound like? Very nice and solid. Righto, let's talk infotainment. So there are a stack of models in the Amarok lineup, but today I'm just gonna focus here on the top spec version. Uh, you can get two different screen sizes depending on where you are in the Amarok lineup. But this one here comes with a bigger 12 inch display. Um, just like the Ford system, I just love that it takes up that entire space there. It's a really high resolution screen. Um, but also like the Ford system, it can be a little laggy at times. So here on the nav display, you know, it's all working fine at the moment, but if you kind of surprise it and go to one of the screens and start looking at other information, it takes a little while to load. And I don't know, I would have thought brand new car, brand new infotainment system, all the latest hardware it would be a little faster. So this will eventually be capable of doing over the air updates. And I'm hoping when that happens, it will be much snappier and they'll be able to just work out some of the bugs as part of the sort of development process. But in terms of the features, you get inbuilt satellite navigation. In terms of smartphone mirroring, you have both uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are wireless, which is great news. You also notice this is a different layout too. So in the Ranger where you have manual adjustments, volume, and also temperature controls, here they've kind of condensed it all into these controls. And I quite like the surfaces on that. It's got a rough finish to it. It's a bit sort of knurled there, which is great. And then you can just click on one of those to get taken to things like your climate menu. And it all looks and feels completely different to the Ranger. So it isn't just a reskin of the Ranger infotainment system. It's, it's all sort of quite unique. Um, AM, FM, and DAB digital radio. Ranger comes with a B&O Play sound system. This actually has a Harman Kardon sound system. So moving away from, again, Ranger in, in that theme where you are looking at different, um, different items there. And they actually fit uh, beneath the rear seat as well, a different layout in terms of the amplifier and the subwoofer too. So it is something that clearly they've put a fair bit of effort into uh, configuring just for this vehicle. Now, over here, ahead of the driver, if you're on the top spec, you're getting the bigger display, which isn't even available on the Ranger at all. So I love that. That also has a custom skin there for Volkswagen too. So you can flick through those menus and configure that as you like. So that's a really cool setup there. So on an infotainment and tech front, they really have sort of loaded this with as much as they can. Uh, each Volkswagen Amarok that is sold in Australia will also have the integrated brake control. So it's not fitted to our car, but that will sit beneath here. So it gives you that full package straight out of the factory. Now let's talk safety tech. So you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, auto dimming rear vision mirror. You have radar cruise control, blind spot monitoring. Blind spot monitoring can also take into account the length of the trailer, which I think is a really great feature. Uh, and the blind spot monitor is built into the wing mirror over there. You get rear cross traffic alert, uh, front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what the camera looks like here. So it's interesting, the camera, it looks okay, but it doesn't quite look as sharp as the Ford camera. So I'm wondering if they're using different hardware here in Amarok compared to Ranger. So I'm gonna have to follow that up and find out. And um, if I do find out, I'll let you know in the comment section below, I'll pin a comment there and, um, and follow up on it. Now, practicality, and we'll start off with your connectivity. So you have wireless phone charging, great news, 12 volt outlet, USB-C, USB-A. You also have a USB-A port up the top here to, um, to hook up a dash cam and that kind of thing. In terms of storing your phone, it can live down there on the wireless phone charger, or you can pop it there on the cup holders. In terms of the cup holders themselves, you have little teeth in there to hold everything in place. Bottle storage inside the doors too. Other storage, you've got a really decent sized center console bin there. You don't have the cup holders in front of the air vents like you do in some of the Ranger and Everest trims, but you do have a pretty reasonably sized glove box and then a secondary glove box up the top here 
and a little storage nook just there. Finally, a sunglasses holder as well. And finally, what about your comfort? So you have dual zone automatic climate control here for the front row. In addition to that, you also have heated seats for the front row. In terms of seat adjustment and seat comfort, so seats can be adjusted electrically for the driver and front passenger. You can go forwards, backwards, backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the front, you can lift the back. You also have lumbar adjustment. Now the seats, they are actually pretty comfortable. We've spent a um, fair bit of time driving the car prior to filming this. And uh, yeah, I actually feel pretty good in the seats. So the last Amarok was kind of a benchmark for seat comfort. So they have definitely carried it on with this. Uh, and finally, what about your steering wheel? It has both tilt and reach adjustment. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. So second row, probably no surprises here, but bottom of this lifts up. You can then hook that into position and this is where you store your items. Now, from memory, Ford puts the jack and stuff behind the seat, but it seems here with the Amarok, they kind of wedge it into that slot and then you have that one spare for hiding odds and ends. You can also then drop this out of the way too. And this is what I was talking about with that different speaker arrangement. So the subwoofer is here in the Ranger, but they've put the Harman Kardon subwoofer over there and the amplifier on this side. And as a result of that, you don't have any storage for odds and ends here, but you do have your two top tether points and they're joined by the two isofix points. Now, what about legroom? So it won't be any different to Ranger. I have this seat in my standard driving position and that means knee room is okay, but not amazing. Toe room is okay and headroom is pretty good. Other creature comforts here, you have air vents just here, map pockets here, grab handle to hop on in. Now this is cool down here because you actually have a power outlet. So it's 150 watt, 230 volt. That is really cool. And then a 12 volt outlet. There are no USB ports down here, which is a little bit disappointing, but at least you do have the flexibility there of actually hooking things up. You have a center armrest here as well. And that is where you'll also find it's a bit hard to open two cup holders in addition to storage inside the doors. I will also point out as well, I notice this doesn't really fit that well back here. So I don't know if that's just a pre-production thing, but hopefully they fix that for the production cars when they do finally hit the roads in Australia. So we have just hit the road in the Amarok. So we were in the top spec Aventura uh, for our sort of interior look, but I've uh, swapped into the Panamericana, so that's second down from the top. So before we get started, I'm going to run you through just the list of engines that is going to be launching with uh, Amarok. And again, it depends on whether you're in Europe or, or in our case, Australia, whether you get the Euro 5 or the Euro 6 engine. So I'm just going to run through the Australian specs here. So it's launching with a set of two litre diesel engines. So the entry level is going to be a two litre diesel turbocharged, 125 kilowatts of power, just over 400 newton metres of torque. And that's going to be available with a six speed manual or a six speed automatic. From there, it steps up to the same diesel that you find in the Ford Ranger, which is a two litre bi-turbo diesel. Uh, that is a 154 kilowatt of power proposition and a 500 newton metres of torque. And that is made to a 10 speed automatic uh, part-time four wheel drive. Then you're in this one here, which is again familiar to Ranger. It's a three litre turbocharged V6 diesel, 184 kilowatts of power, 600 Newton meters of torque, and also made it to a 10 speed auto. But just like the Ranger, you can run this in four wheel drive automatic. So that is basically a permanent four wheel drive mode. And then finally rounding out the range is going to be a 2.3 litre turbocharged petrol engine. And that's probably the one I'm quite excited for because that's an engine that has lineage to Focus RS. That's also going to be available with 10 speed automatic only. And, uh, and that one is going to be only available in the top spec Aventura model. And that'll pump out 222 kilowatts of power and a little over 450 newton meters of torque. So let's talk about this one. So Panamericana sits on 20 inch alloy wheels the top spec Aventura on 21s. So there is a little bit of a difference there. In addition to that, the Aventura actually gets a thicker anti-roll bar at the front, which means it is a little more poised for handling uh, as opposed to this, which is kind of a, a mix between off-road and handling. So how does it feel behind the wheel? It's actually really good. It's, it's quite responsive here in the V6 diesel. The V6 diesel also has a different note to Ranger, which I thought was quite curious. Even though they're saying that nothing is plumbed in through the speakers, it does sound a little bit different as you get onto the throttle. Um, and yeah, 10-speed auto is nice and responsive too. One thing I did notice when we were going for a drive earlier on is the lack of paddle shifters. And I know that 
you know, paddle shifters are associated with sportiness, but they're actually quite useful for towing and just being able to, to rifle through the gears as required. Here, I have to go down to the gear stick and use the plus and minus here, and it's a little bit distracting, I reckon, as, as opposed to just a set of paddle shifters that you can pull at any time. Now, we don't have fuel economy figures yet, so that'll come uh, as we get closer to launch along with pricing and that kind of thing. But what I can tell you today is about how it rides. So we drove the Aventura yesterday, which was on 21-inch alloy wheels. And look, the ride was uh, good, but I thought it was a little bit busy. And as a result of that, you do find that when you are on smooth roads, and surprisingly, there are a stack of really smooth roads here in, in South Africa, it, it can feel like it's jittering a fair bit as it drives along. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is a different story. So here in Panamericana trim, because it's sitting on 20s, it doesn't have that thicker anti-roll bar, it actually feels a little nicer to drive and, and it is quite smooth and, and comfortable. And I think that's what you want. If you're not wanting to be totally focused on off-roading, the smooth and comfortable approach is probably what you want to go for. Given that the Aventura will be available with the turbocharged petrol engine, that is probably going to be the sportier option for, for people who aren't so obsessed with being able to go off-road because on those tyres you are going to be doing a whole lot of off-road driving. Now let's talk about drive modes. So uh, unlike Ranger where you select drive modes here, you've got to dive into this menu and then you only really have uh, off-road and towing driving modes. So normal eco, tow haul, slippery, mud ruts and deep snow sand. There is no sort of sport mode. but Let's take it for a little punt up this road and we'll see how this feels. Nice twisty section of road. Oh, this feels really good. I'm finding as we power through some of these bends, especially the higher speed ones, it really hooks up nicely and you can lean into the throttle. Uh, especially here in that four wheel drive auto mode, it's able to shuffle torque between the front and rear axles as required. And as a result of that, you don't get any of that sort of understeery, oversteery feel that you get in some dual cab utes which are just rear wheel drive oriented. And this engine is really responsive as well. 10 speed auto is nice and sharp and quick, dives back through the gears, pins you back in the seat. That 600 newton meters of torque is, is just a really good combination with this size of vehicle. So we don't have an official 0 to 100 time for the Amarok, but put it up against the V-Box and this is how it went. So there you go, sub nine seconds, uh, and then our 80 to 120 was uh, around six seconds as well. So about on par with uh, where we were with Ranger as well, which is kind of to be expected. We will do some more comprehensive testing when we do finally get these back in Australia though. Now let's talk about road noise. Um, it's actually not too bad. There is a little bit of wind noise that comes in over these mirrors at highway speeds, but it's actually pretty quiet in here. I think Volkswagen's aim with Amarok was to make it a little bit more refined than Ranger. And I think they've been able to achieve that thanks to uh, the tire selection as well. So here we're on a fairly coarse chip section of road doing 80 k's an hour, and I'm not really hearing anything come into the cabin outside of that wind noise. And that is partly thanks to those tires as well, which is good news. What has Volkswagen actually done to, to this package to differentiate it from the Ranger? Well, it comes down to steering and suspension tunes. The steering feel is, is different, and, and unless I can drive them back to back, it is hard to pinpoint the exact changes there, but this has a, I hate using this sort of term, but a Volkswagen feel to it. So it is quite communicative, and it has a, a sportier feel than the Ranger does, which is a bit more relaxed when you don't go down the path of something like the Raptor. So uh, from that point of view, it does feel like there is a difference between these two packages. And I think that's important as well. You don't want to piggyback off someone else's platform to just achieve the same thing. This to me actually feels like its own unique vehicle. And it kind of feels a little bit like the previous generation Amarok, certainly in Aventra trim where it is. But on the firmer side, it has that sporty bent to it. Uh, here, as you step down to the Panamericana, it uh, feels a little more relaxed and a bit more sort of uh, comfort oriented than that sportier version. And look, one thing I will touch on just with the screen and the layout that Volkswagen has here compared to the Ford setup, I, I kind of, yeah, I don't know, I, I do like having the drive mode selected down here simply because for me to change drive modes now, I need to take eyes off the road to hit the mode button, wait for that menu to come up, then I need to click on the one that I want there. It'd just be better if there was a quicker, quicker way to actually achieve that. Um, so yeah, just a, a minor grievance, but yeah, a button or, or just some lever here to change those drive modes would be great. 
What about your visibility? So I can see clearly down the front of the bonnet there, it's got some nice sculpted lines to it. The wing mirrors are huge as well, so I'm getting great visibility down the side of the car, especially with that blind spot monitor built into those as well. And then this also has the same blind spot tech that Ranger has, so it means that when you do have a trailer connect, you are able to see further down the back of the car thanks to uh, the, the sensors mounted to the rear bumper here, so they give you an indication of how far down the vehicle your trailer is and then if anyone comes into that blind spot it will alert you inclusive of the trailer length which I think is excellent technology. Righto, time to do a little bit of off-roading. We've switched from the V6 diesel into this style which is a two-litre turbocharged four-cylinder diesel. They've got these set up for the off-road course. They're on the 18s and also all terrains as well. Um, this is like an hour long course. So this is going to feel a little disjointed, but I'll only record just the interesting bits that are worth talking about. I ran you through this setup. So with the V6 diesel, I mentioned that you can run it through four wheel drive automatic. Here on the four cylinder, it's the same as the Ranger where you can only run it in two wheel drive high range. Uh, that is on uh, sealed and unsealed surfaces, and then four-wheel drive high range is available to use on unsealed surfaces. And if you want to get a better understanding of why, click up here to watch a video we uh, shot before explaining four-wheel drive controls. Um, look, I, I do like the fact that you can manually select diff lock and all that sort of stuff here without having to go through a menu. So you've got a diff lock button, hill descent control, and a traction control. There are no modes. So with uh, some variants of the Ranger, you can actually select your off-road modes here you don't have any of that. You also don't have uh, a 360 camera on this particular car, so you can't sort of see the, the ruts and stuff you're about to fall into. So it's all kind of left up to the driver to take care of that. Having said that though, um, everything here is, is pretty straightforward. So all of your controls are easy to find. And as a novice, it's, uh, you know, it's all easy to use, which I think is the important part. You don't want anything that's too complex or hard to understand if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so we've got a bit of a descent here. I'm gonna flick hill descent control on. We'll see how that works. Yeah, cool. So same as Ranger, I can adjust the speed using the cruise control controls here, which is great. So yeah, I like, love that flexibility because I, I really don't like it when you are doing off-roading in some uh, dual cab utes and you don't have the flexibility to choose your descent speed. This is really just an easy way to do it. Okay, we've got a couple of moguls just here thread the car through that. We have the rear diff lock, so it's all, it's all pretty straightforward. Yeah, no dramas there at all. Okay, I like this. A little bit of wheel articulation here as we come through this little hole. There you go, no dramas there as well. Yeah, nothing to report here. It's all pretty straightforward. It's doing it all nicely. This looks nice and steep, so this should be a good test of not only rear diff lock but also just tractive efforts as we get up here. This tyre is actually pretty good, the all-terrain, so it shouldn't have any dramas climbing this, but we'll see how we go. Yeah, nice. Bring it into that. Oh, piece of cake. It is alarming how easy this is to, to drive, pretty much. It is absolutely unreal. Awesome. Okay, so our terrain is getting a little rougher here. Uh, we've got some exposed rocks and other sort of bits and pieces. Um, yeah, look, I'm pretty sort of happy with how this is going. And I like this screen ahead of the driver as well. It gives you an idea of the angles that you're on and stuff like that. So it's all pretty useful information, especially for a, um, an off-roading novice. Yeah, look, I've got to be honest, the terrain here isn't overly difficult. So we will reserve judgment on off-roading for when we get back to Australia. But um, yeah, it looks so far so good. I'm pretty impressed with how it's performing just straight out of the box here. And look, to be honest, most people would probably just be doing this kind of driving anyway. We're not doing anything too crazy here. So um, it's good to see that it does work for its intended purpose for the average person. So that has been your first look at the new Volkswagen Amarok. I reckon they've differentiated this enough from the Ford Ranger. And given that Volkswagen was involved in the process from very early on, they've done enough here to make sure that this feels very much like an Amarok as opposed to just a derivation of the Ford Ranger. I'm keen to test this on Australian roads because roads here in South Africa have actually been really good. So it's been fine for the 21 inch alloy wheels, but 
will it actually work in Australia? That is yet to be seen. Now, have you ordered an Amarok? Let me know in the comments section below. Have you put money down? What have you gone for? And what do you think about this blue color as well? I'm keen to see what you think. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.